Welcome to CS320, Chapter 12, Context-Free Grammars. So now that we've learned that there are some limitations to regular expressions and finite automatas, we're going to learn another way to define languages. Actually, it's kind of like the recursive definitions that we've used before. So context-free grammars contain an alphabet, just like regular expressions and finite automatas. And usually we'll use A and B for that alphabet, but we could add other letters for some of them if we wanted to. They also include a set of non-terminals. Now in this book, we'll, or in um, this class, we're going to use capital letters like a capital N or a capital S or even a capital A and capital B. Whereas the alphabet, the letters that are actually in the words will be lowercase letters like A and B that way. And the non-terminals have one start symbol, and we're pretty much always going to use S for this class, but we can designate some sort of non-terminal that's our start symbol. Then we have a list of productions. And this is an example of one production, and this is one example of a context-free grammar. So we start with the start symbol, and the start symbol can get replaced with what the arrow points to. So we can replace the start symbol with a terminal. And if you notice, that's a lowercase. And the lowercase says it's a terminal. And this is a capital letter. So that says it happens to be a non-terminal. And then we can keep going until um, and replacing this S with another a S. So we'll keep a, I'll show you an example of generating a word in this language. Another thing that we can replace S with will be the null word. So we can just take an S and make it disappear. That's what this means. Now there are two uh, people that uh, studied these context-free grammars, Bacchus and Nauer, and that's uh, what they came up with this bacchus Nauer form. They wanted a, a shortcut way to write out this, so writing one production per line got a little tedious, so they just said, okay, S can get replaced with this or that. So this is just a little shorthand way of writing down a context-free grammar. Now I bring this up because in lots of other classes, they'll talk about BNFs, and whenever they see a, say a BNF, they're just talking about a context-free grammar and it's just popular because this is a shorthand way of writing down the grammars. So how would we generate, a, generate words in this language? So we start with the start symbol. And the start symbol says, I can either replace it with that or that, the null word. So if we wanted to replace it with the null word, we could just cross this out. And then we'd only have the null word left. So the null word is a word in this language. Now we could keep replacing S with other things as well, like that one. We could just replace it with this or this. So let's go ahead and we'll replace the S and with an AS. And you can see uh, we use this production rule to get to here. Now this is not a word in the language because it still has a non-terminal inside of it. In order to generate a word, all of the non-terminals or the capital letters have to disappear. So we can keep replacing uh, this. So we'll replace this S with another A S and we'll keep the A that's already there. So this A falls down there and this um, generates the new A S right there. Okay, and I'm sorry I'm not drawing these uh, capital letters bigger, but of course S is uh, the non-terminal. It should be a capital letter. So we could keep replacing that again, and let's replace it one more time. And in this case, we're replacing this S with that. And then we still have to bring down those two letters, okay? And again, still not a word in our language because it has a non-terminal in it. But finally, we can replace it with that. And then we're just left with three A's. 
And since the non-terminal is now gone, and, and you don't have to write this as part of your word, um, as long as you have other letters, um, you can just leave that out. And now we finally have a word in the language. So if we're looking at this, um, this language is a star. Okay, but this is a context-free grammar definition of a star, whereas uh, this is using a regular expression. Now let's look at this context-free grammar. We can replace s with an as or a bs or just an a or just a b. So let's go ahead and uh, we can take s and we can replace it right away with an a. So a is one word in the language. We can also do the same thing, replace it right away with a b. So b is another word in the language. And then uh, we can replace s with a as. And then it, now this is not a word in our language yet. We can't have a words in our language that still have non-terminals. We have to get rid of the non-terminals somehow. So we could get rid of it by replacing the S with an A or a B. If we replace it with one of these two, then we keep the S around, which means that we're gonna get a longer word. So let's go ahead and um, replace it some more. So in this case, I decided to replace it with this term. So this term comes down and fills in the S spot for that. But of course, that introduces another S that we have to replace. So we can just replace that with a B. And once we get all the non-terminals out, we have another word in this language. So if we look at this, this happens to be all words except the null word. So the null word is not in this language because there's no way to generate a word using these productions that doesn't have any letters in it. So um, we can have any combination of A's and B's. We just keep building up the word using these two. And then for the very last letter, whether it be an A or a B, we replace that S that's always gonna be in there with one of these. And that gets rid of the S and we're left with the, any with that word. Now here's another example of a context-free language. S can get replaced with an A, S in the middle, and a B, or the null word. So what kind of words can we generate? Let's just uh, kind of do down do a list. Well, first of all, we can go right away to the null word. Let's say that we use this production once and then use this one to erase the S in the middle. What do we get? Well, eventually we start with A, S, B, and then the null word uh, takes out that and we're left with an A, B. Now we can do this multiple times. Let's say we do use this production two times and then erase the S with that. Well, then we would get a A, A, B, B. And if we did it three times and we get A, 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 B, B, B. So in fact, this language right here is A to the N, B to the N. Now remember, we proved that this cannot be defined with a finite automata, regular expression, or transition graph. This is a non-regular language. So con a context-free grammar can define at least one language that is non-regular. Now, I didn't show this in the video, but another language that is non-regular is the pal language of palindromes. However, a context-free grammar can define palindromes with this um, context-free grammar. Okay, now if we look at this, um, we can replace S with a letter on the front and a letter on behind or we can replace S with B's in front and behind, or we can just have the S disappear. So this kind of generates some words. Um, we start with our start symbol, replace it with an A, S, A, and maybe we can replace it with an A, B, S, B, A. 
So what I did is I took this start symbol and I replaced it. Notice that's this. And I used this production right here and I replaced this start symbol with this production. So we're left over with a BSB in that place. And now we can keep going. Maybe we can use this production again, or this first production. And that would leave us with an A, B, A, S, A, B, A. And you can see we're growing the word around this, and but we have to put the same letter in front and behind it. So it ends up making a palindrome. Once we're done with the palindrome, we can go ahead and take the S and erase it with that last final production and be left with ABA, ABA, and this is a palindrome. There is one limitation. Uh, so that is another uh, language that, uh, that we can define with a context-free grammar that we cannot define with a regular expression. So this is a non-regular language. Now this doesn't mean right now that uh, context-free grammars can define more languages than regular expressions. There might be some languages that a regular expression can define that a context-free grammar cannot. And we're gonna look at that in the next couple of chapters. Okay, I'll finish with one more uh, quite a bit more complex context-free grammar. In this case, I've introduced other non-terminals like a capital B and a capital U. Now, we can define what B goes to. B can be replaced with B, two A's or two B's, and U can be replaced with an AB or a BA. So we're not just stuck with one uh, non-terminal. We can have several different non-terminals in our context-free grammar. And in this case, uh, we uh, for each non-terminal, we have to define what we can replace it with. Now, if we don't define it, let's say we use non-terminal B and we don't define what B can be replaced with, well, then if we use this production, there's no way to replace B with anything. So we can't get a non-terminal out of our word, which means that we can't generate words. So every non-terminal needs to be replaced with something or else it's pretty much useless to even introduce the non-terminal in our word to begin with. So what is this language? Now the first uh, production right here, that says that uh, when we start with one S, we can replace it and get two S's and do three S's or replace it again and get four S's and so on. So what this basically says is we can grow the number of S's as big as we want. Of course, we can always make them disappear as well. Now, this it, we probably wouldn't, uh, to generate a word, we wouldn't make like 20 S's and then erase 15 of them with that. But you could if you wanted to. So that's what this production says. This production says that we can make S's disappear. And that's probably just so that we can get the last S out of our word so that the non-terminal can disappear and we can actually have a word. So then we have the two S's with a B, and the B could come before the S or after the S. So as we replace an S, we can replace it with a BS or an SB. Now if we look, the B's eventually get replaced with two A's or two B's. So this could be AAS or BBS. So I replace this B with that. And because we can always replace an S with another BS or an SB, that means that we can have as many double letters as we want introduced into our word. And it doesn't matter that double letters can become before or after, there's no limitations. Now what's this uh, right here say? If we looked at U, that's uh, we have to have an AB and a BA. So notice all words introduce two letters at a time. So in the case with B, they have to be the same letter. In the case with U, they have to be different letters. So the U always has to come in a group of two. Whenever we introduce one U, it has to come with the other one because this is 
the only rule that we can replace or introduce use into our word. And again, the use are non-terminals. So this language happens to be even, even, meaning we have an even number of A's and an even number of B's. Because as we add replace uh, B's, we're always adding two A's or two B's, which keeps it even. If we want to mix it up, we have to have two U's, one to make it odd and another one to make it back to even. So this will, when we introduce this, this means we'll have an odd number of A's and an odd number of B's. And later on, we have to even it back out with an, uh, another B and another A, which will make it back even. Now, of course, the U, we can use both this one to make it odd and then this one again to make it even. So this language is even, even. Now, again, the two problems that you'll have to face with this is one, can you look at a context-free grammar and figure out what the language is? And two, can we give you a language like even, even, and can you generate a context-free grammar that defines it? Those are going to be the two main problems that you're going to have to do in your homework.